Hi, I'm Mike Coleman, a developer advocate at Google Cloud. And today I want to talk about some key considerations you should be aware of when looking to migrate existing applications from VMs to containers using Migrate for Anthos. In a couple of our earlier videos on Migrate for Anthos, we covered how to use the discovery tool to discover what applications are a good fit for migration. If you've not checked those out, you may want to watch them and come back. You can find the links in the description below. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to assume that you've already chosen an application, run the discovery tool, and found that your application is well suited for migration. While this is a great place to be, there are some additional questions you'll want to answer before proceeding with a migration. What should I do with any databases I might be using? How should I handle a VM with multiple applications running in it? How do my networking requirements translate to a Kubernetes deployment? Let's start by looking at handling multiple apps or services running in a single VM. A common scenario we often see is an application where multiple components are running on the same VM. For instance, perhaps you have a web front end, a middleware component, and a database all running together in a monolithic virtual machine. Now, ideally with Kubernetes, you have a single process running in each pod. However, by default, Migrate for Anthos will not create a separate container image for each service running in a VM. Since Migrate for Anthos will try to migrate each running service, what you do in a situation where you have multiple application components is to ensure that only one is running when you run the migration process. For instance, shut down the middleware and the database, run Migrate for Anthos, and capture the web front end. Then shut down the web front end and the database, run Migrate for Anthos, and capture the middleware. With those two components migrated into containers, you'll need to decide what makes the most sense for your database. With the database tier, you first need to decide whether or not you're dealing with a mission critical component. In some cases, you might be migrating or configuring a dev test deployment of your application, or perhaps your production application is configured as a monolith and you don't want to break out the separate components. Now you realize, of course, that this configuration doesn't offer you the ability to easily scale or provide fault tolerance, but it works for what you're trying to accomplish. In this case, you would use Migrate for Anthos to migrate the data to a persistent volume, attach that volume to the pod at the appropriate spot in the file system. If it's possible to migrate your database to Cloud SQL, that's a great choice. You can use Google Cloud's database migration service to migrate the data, then configure your application to use Cloud SQL or other managed database service. From there, you can start to benefit from the advantages of running your database on a managed service offering. Now, if Cloud SQL is not a fit, then your next option could be to run your database natively on Kubernetes. You would build a cluster and install and configure the database software using Kubernetes stateful set and persistent volumes. Then use Migrate for Anthos to export the data from the VM to the new database. Finally, if running the database on Kubernetes is not a good fit, you could migrate the database tier into a Google Cloud Compute Engine VM using Migrate for Compute Engine. There's a great blog post up on our site providing some additional details on how to decide where to run your database. We'll put the link in the description below. Now that you have individual images for each of your services, you'll want to think about networking. In many cases, different services within an application are accessed using a DNS-based resource name. However, when migrating to Kubernetes, you'll use a service name. A good recommendation is to choose short yet descriptive service names and ensure your services are all running in the correct Kubernetes namespace. One way to handle the move from DNS names to service names is to provide your service names via a Kubernetes config map. So let's take a look at using that config map to alter the service discovery. So I have an application that I've migrated over, uh, a service in an application. And so if I do a get services here, you'll see this ledger monolith service that came from a virtual machine using Migrate for Anthos, but I have not changed the DNS mapping to Kubernetes service mapping, so it doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in and we're gonna open the editor and we're going to edit the config map. And we're just going to remove these DNS suffixes. 
So and when we do that, that will take that from being a DNS based name to the Kubernetes service name, which is ledger monolith dash service. So let me do this last one here. And then we'll save that out and move back to our terminal and let's clear the screen. And we're going to go ahead and apply the config map. And that's going to update the services and how they communicate. So if we clear that, now what we need to do is we need to restart our pods and we'll do that by deleting them and then they'll recreate automatically. So we'll delete them and then let's come up and let's uh, watch those pods get reloaded. And this will take a second, so I've sped up the video. And then now we can bounce out here and let's take a look at our services and make sure we've got the right IP address. So we'll do a get service and there's that IP. We'll move up here into our browser. We'll do a refresh and you can see that it's actually working now. So that is using a config map to move from DNS based name resolution with a virtual machine to Kubernetes service based name resolution using the internal Kubernetes service discovery mechanisms. As an aside, when dealing with sensitive configuration data, you'll want to take advantage of Kubernetes secrets. For instance, if you need to provide a password to connect to the database, you can store that in a Kubernetes secret rather than in a config map. Check the Kubernetes documentation for more information on how to configure and use secrets. Now, the next thing to consider is controlling access to your application. By default, the deployment spec generated by Migrate for Anthos contains a suggested headless service object of type cluster IP. This means no load balancing and a single cluster internal IP reachable only from within that cluster. In the case of our web front end service, we'd want to change that to the type load balancer to allow external access. You should also consider using some of Kubernetes network policy features to restrict access to your various application tiers. For instance, you might want to use network policies that allow only the web front end to talk to the middleware tier and another policy that allows only the middleware tier to talk to the database. We've hit a few of the highlights with regards to things you should consider as you plan your VM migration using Migrate for Anthos. To learn more about Migrate for Anthos, be sure to check out the Migrate for Anthos documentation. And this is one video in a series. So be on the lookout for other Migrate for Anthos videos and like and subscribe to be notified as we add additional content.